So now I have this really cool data set demonstrating the buildings, the car parks, trees, walkways and roads on JCU Cairns campus. But what you'll see is there are some gaps and those gaps relate to largely to areas of bare ground and some grassy patches as well. And now being a little bit of a lazy kind of person, I'm not so much in for manually digitizing all of these extra patches. So I thought, is there a better way that we can do this that's gonna be faster and a little bit of a cheat as well. So I'm happy to say there is a way that we can fill in these gaps really easily. So the first thing that I did was to create a new feature class that I've called internal JCU. Now I've called it this, this because basically what I've done is I've digitized a polygon out that's the internal parts of JCU which are bounded by this ring, ro ring road that runs all around the outside. Now this looks great, so visually it's appealing, you know, let's forget about the colors that I've chosen there, but you can see that I've filled in the gaps nicely. But if I was to turn off infrastructure, you'll see here that it is really a cheat. It's only just a visualization to see those gaps filled. And what you actually have is this solid creation of the background. And that doesn't reflect accurately what these spaces actually are. So what I want to do is to take this pinky purpley color and to chop it up so that it only reflects those areas of bare ground or grass. And that way I'm going to use that in with all of my other areas of building, car park, trees, walkway and roads. And I will get an accurate depiction of the area covered by each of those categories. So let's look at how I've done that. So first of all, we have our infrastructure, which is our blue, green and gray infrastructure layer that I've digitized. Then, like I said, I've digitized the boundary of the area that we want to encapsulate in our total coverage here. So I've got these in two different feature classes that you can see in my table of contents over on the left hand side. Now, always a good idea to save your project as you go along because we know that sometimes these geoprocessing tools that we use can cause the software to crash. So always best to save as a matter of practice before you go ahead and create a new process. So now I'm going to use the analysis toolbar here, so this tab, and go into tools. And the tool that I'm interested in using is Erase. So it's just like an eraser on the back of your pencil that you can use to erase out certain features. So I've typed in Erase in the search field here and if I click Enter, I'll come up with a bunch of different options. I just want that first one. So as I can read it, it says it's gonna create me a new feature class, which is perfectly fine. And it's overlaying the input features with the polygons of the erase features. So I'm going to combine the infrastructure feature class with the internal JCU feature class. So let's click on that. Now, our, or you can get some information on the left-hand side so that you know which, which file you put in which location. So our input features in this case are going to be my internal JCU feature class and the erase features are going to be my infrastructure features there. Now what I'm going to have now is this output feature class and again just double checking that file path is correct so it's going in the right geo database and the output feature class that it's automatically naming it is called internal JCU erase. So I might just add erase infrastructure there just to remind me exactly what operation I have done to this particular file to create this output here. Now let's run this and see if it does what we want it to do. So it pops up nice and quickly into our table of contents here. Now the best way to be able to see what it's actually done is to turn off the other layers. So I'll untick that and I'll untick the infrastructure there and bingo, we've got all those other little bits and pieces that weren't otherwise, otherwise categorized as trees, building, car park, walkway or roads. Now the only challenge therefore remaining is how do I get what is now a single polygon, which we can see here if we go to the map tab and select by attributes, hit the select button 
and we can see this single polygon here. Now, how do I get this into my infrastructure layer? So what I want to do is actually really quite simple. So I'm just going to remove the geoprocessing window so it's not taking up too much space. And I have my internal JCU selected here. So you can see I've got the select button highlighted here. Now, if I just right click on that, I'm going to go to copy. Now what I want to do is to come over to infrastructure and let's turn that off so we don't get confused. And I'm going to now hit control alt V. Now this is what we do to do what's called a paste special. So this is going to allow us to copy something from one feature class into a different feature class. And we want that to pop up into our infrastructure feature class. Our other options will appear there if we have any others in that drop down box there. So let's hit OK now. All right, now the only thing remaining then is at the moment you can see that new record pop up here. So there's one record selected and that's going to be that background or the, the grassy or bare, bare earth areas. Now it doesn't have a name. So at the moment it's just been termed null. So we need to fix that and we're going to, we're going to call this um, bare ground. So that's largely what it is. We hit enter on that. And we'll just double check that it has it has made that change, which is great. But of course, it doesn't pop up immediately because if we have a look over in our table of contents, we don't have a color selection for that particular particular category. So we're going to have to go and change that within the symbology. So if I right click on the table of contents there, and I can go to symbology here, then this is going to allow me to add another different category with a new unique value there. So we see down the bottom, we've got these different different colors here and they're all assigned to features that we have already named. So all we need to do is to press this green little plus button here to add an unlisted value. So we have bare ground that's popped up there in a pink color. Perhaps we might change that. Let's make it um, a bit more of a brownie color perhaps. Let's make it this, this sort of brownie color. And I'm also going to remove the outline there as well. And that's actually gonna be quite a dark, strong color. So I might change it to something a little bit lighter and apply that. Hit the back arrow up the top here and okay. And we have a winner. So over in our left-hand side in the table of contents, we can now see that bare ground is listed there and it's also displayed in our map view as well. So all we need to do is hit clear and to make sure that that's not a selected feature there. We may also wanna play with those colors a little bit because now that orange is really quite vibrant. And we have our complete map of the internal component of JCU bounded by the ring road. And so now once we get to this point, it's really quite easy to then do some summaries and some calculations as to the area covered by all of those different types of features.